Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. Today's video, we've got two learning objectives. We are learning to use tables to explore the relationship between two variables. And our second learning objective in blue, we are learning to determine the equation from a table. Before we get into a couple of examples, we need to explain this formula, y equals mx plus c, and how this formula can be used to identify a rule or an equation that will work for the relationship between two variables that you might be looking at. So the first thing I want to note is the c, or oh, sorry, the x. The x, that is the variable on your list that goes one, two, three, four, five, and so on. It's the one that's constantly increasing by one. The y, that's the, the other variable that you're investigating. So those would be your two variables. And the m and the c, they are numbers that come from your table. So the m, that refers to the difference that you've identified. And we're going to start calling that the gradient, or how much it changes by. And the C, that relates to the corresponding value when the X is equal to zero. So what would the other value be? So that might not make sense now, but when we get into some examples, hopefully that'll become clearer with what I mean. So let's have a look at the first example. So we've got a dot and Surrounding that dot is four sticks. And that's the first bit of our sequence. We've now got another dot. Surrounding that is four sticks. And we're going to attach a second dot. So we can see that one's got two dots. And we're going to do this a third time. So we've got our four sticks with a dot in the middle. We've got our next set of sticks with the next dot in the middle and we've got our third and final set. So we can see how this is a pattern and there are two variables that we're interested in. Variable number one are the number of dots in each of those patterns and variable number two would be the sticks that surround those dots. So let's draw a table to help us with that. So dots we're going to call that D is the first variable we're going to investigate and the second one we're going to be comparing that to is sticks and we're going to call that s what we're going to do is we're going to put we're going to leave a bit of a gap to start off with so I'll put another line there and i'll explain what that's used for in a little bit but the number of dots we can see that there's one dot two dot and three dots so let's write down one two and three Related to that first pattern over there, there were four sticks. One, two, three, four. Let's have a look at the pattern with two dots. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That means there are seven sticks there. And finally, let's have a look at the third one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we've got ten dots. So what we're doing here is we are exploring the relationship between these two variables, which is our first learning objective. So we've identified a pattern, hopefully, and we'll dive into it a bit more. The next step I want us to do is we want to write down our y equals mx plus c formula. And we want to start putting in the information that is relevant to us. So we're back down here on the bottom left. And the first thing that we wanted to identify was what relates to our x? What would the D or the S related to the dots or the sticks, would that, which one of those would go under the X value? And we can see here the X is the variable that goes one, two, three, four, five. And if we have a look at our table, we can see the dots, that's going up in ones. One, two, three. And if we carried that on, that would be four, five, six. So that means the number of dots is the equivalent 
to the x. So we're going to put that underneath it. We now know the y, the other variable. So in our case, that's s. So in our case, we're going to put the s underneath the y. So s is going to be equal to. And we've now got to explore the other two numbers, the m and the c. So the m, that relates to the difference or the gradient. And how we determine that is we have a look. Let's compare 4 and 3. How did we get from 4 to, sorry, 4 to 7? 4 to 7, we went plus 3. And then how did we get from 7 to 10? Again, we went plus 3. So we can see that same number, plus 3, coming up. And I'm sure if this table was a bit longer, we would see that plus 3 pattern occur every single time. So that plus 3 is the difference or the gradient and the relationship between the dots and the sticks. So where that M is, we're going to put that 3. Obviously, if it was being, if it was reducing, so if it was minus 3, we'll put negative 3. But in our case, it's a positive 3. So we've now done the M, and we're looking at our formula on the bottom. We're now dealing with the final part, the plus C. And I said before, that relates to when X is equal to 0. And that's what this missing gap up here is for. Let's put in 0. And we need to identify what the corresponding value would be there for 0. So if we took our pattern back, so what number plus 3 comes to 4? That would be 1. So we've worked backwards to find out if there are 0 dots, how many sticks would there be? There would always be one. So that means that C is going to be that one or plus one. So we've come up with a rule. We've found out the number of sticks is going to be equal to three times the number of dots plus one. And what we can do is we can now use that formula to answer questions. So let's say you had 11 dots. How many sticks would you have? So the number of sticks would be equal to 3 times 11, because we have 11 dots, so we're going to put the 11 where that D is, and we're going to plus 1, that becomes 33 plus 1, and that becomes 34. So by using our rule, we can extrapolate it, and we figured out that there would be 34 sticks if there was a sequence with 11 dots. So that was the end of our first example. Let's have a look at another one. So we use our orange marker. So this time around, let's think of maybe a fence that maybe your mum and dad are building. So that's the first post, and there is a cross that connects it to the next post. So that will be the first sequence. Let's say they've done a slightly bigger fence now. So we've got our first cross of the post, and we've added in another one. And the third sequence, cross, we now need to think what two variables we're exploring. So we're probably comparing the number of crosses with the number of posts in a pattern. So let's draw up a table. So we've got crosses. I'm going to call that C. And we got the number of posts. I'm going to call that P. And ignore my spelling mistake that I there did there and that I'm crossing out. We now need to leave a gap. That's for the zero. So we'll need to figure out that later for when we want to use the formula. And we want to write one, two, and three. So let's have a look at the first one. We have one cross, and that is surrounded by two posts. Let's have a look at the next sequence. We've got two crosses, and that is surrounded by three posts. And the final one, we have three crosses, and that is surrounded by four posts. So let's get rid of those so they're a bit more visible. We now want to write down our formula, y equals mx plus c. We want to start off figuring out what would our x variable be. That's the one that starts at 1 and goes 1, 2, 3, 4. And that for us would be the number of crosses because the number of posts 
there wasn't one that had a 1 in it. So that means that x value would be a c. The other variable would be the y. So now p is equal to the m that relates to the differences. So let's have a look. To get from 2 to 3, we're adding 1. To get from 3 to 4, we're also adding 1. So we're going to put a plus 1 in front of that. And the c, that relates to this zero value. If we continue the pat pattern backwards, what number plus 1 gets us to 2? And that would be 1 as well. So that means that c for y equals mx plus c would be equal to 1. So our formula would be the number of posts is equal to the number of crosses plus 1. And we can use this formula to work out something a bit different. So last time we calculated how many sticks there would be, that was the y value. Let's try to use our algebra skills to figure out how many posts there would be, or how many crosses there would be. So if there were 12 crosses, oops, apologies. If there were 12 posts, how many crosses would there be? So what we're going to do is we're going to put that 12 posts into our formula. So 12 is equal to C plus 1. And we're going to go minus 1, minus 1. That means C is equal to 11. So we've used our algebra skills to work backwards to find out the number of crosses that would be needed to find a pattern with 12 posts in it. And what that means is there are 11 crosses would mean 12 posts. Hopefully you found this video useful. Um, and just to recap, our learning objective, we had two of them today. We were learning to explore the relationship between two variables. We did that through the use of tables. And our second learning objective, we are also learning to determine the equation from a table. So from those tables, you we used our y equals mx plus c equations to calculate or determine an equation that represents the pattern we are observing within our table. Hopefully you found this video useful and we'll see you later on.